The extract is taken from Bram Stoker's novel Dracula, written in 1897. In this extract, Jonathan Harker records in his journal his private thoughts and feelings about Count Dracula and his castle. 8th of May <clears throat> I began to fear as I wrote in this book that I was writing in too much detail, but now I am glad that I went into detail from the start, for there is something so strange about this place and everything in it that I cannot help but feel uneasy. I wish I were safely out of here, that I had never come. It may be that this strange night existence is taking its toll on me, if only that were all. If there were anyone to talk to, I could bear it, but there is no one. I have only Count Dracula to speak with, and he, I fear I'm myself the only living soul within the place. Let me be plain, so far as facts can be, it will help me cope, and imagination must not run riot with me. If it does, I am lost. I only slept a few hours when I went to bed, and feeling that I could not sleep any more, got up. I had hung my shaving mirror by the window, and was just beginning to shave. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder, and heard the Count's voice saying to me, Good morning. I started, for it amazed me that I had not seen him, since the reflection of the mirror covered the whole room behind me. Having been startled, I had cut myself slightly, but did not notice it at that moment. Having answered the Count's greeting, I turned to the mirror again to see how I had been mistaken. This time, there could be no mistake, for the man was behind me, and I could see him over my shoulder, but there was no reflection of him in the mirror. The whole room behind me was displayed, but there was no sign of a man in it except myself. This was startling and coming on top of so many strange things, was beginning to increase that vague feeling of uneasiness, which I always feel when the Count is near. But at that moment, I saw the cut had bled a little, and the blood was trickling over my chin. I put down the razor, turning as I did half round to look for some sticking plaster, when the Count saw my face. His eyes blazed with a sort of demonic fury, and he suddenly made a grab at my throat. I pulled away, and his hand touched the rosary beads which held the crucifix. It made an instant change in him, for his anger passed so quickly that I could hardly believe it was ever there. Take care, he said. Take care of how you cut yourself. It is more dangerous than you think in this country. Then, seizing the shaving mirror, he continued, And this is the wretched thing that has done the mischief. Away with it! And opening the window, with one wrench of his terrible hand, he flung out the mirror, which shattered into a thousand pieces on the stones of the courtyard far below. Then he left the room without a word. It is very annoying, for I do not see how I am to shave unless by my watch case or the bottom of the shaving pot which is fortunately made out of metal. After breakfast I did a little exploring in the castle. I went out on the stairs and found a room looking towards the south. The view was magnificent and from where I stood there was every opportunity of seeing it. The castle was on the very edge of a terrific cliff a stone falling from the window would fall 1,000 feet without touching anything. But I am not able to describe beauty, for after I had seen this view, I explored further. Doors, doors, doors everywhere. And all are locked and bolted. In no place except via the windows in the castle walls is there an available exit. The castle is a prison, and I am its prisoner. <laughs>